Now, if you selected a power station and you're just not getting the overall performance you expected, there's usually one factor that most people overlook, and that's because brands really don't talk about it. Today, we're gonna to put three of the top power stations to the test and see which one is most efficient and give you the information you need to either make adjustments with the equipment you already purchased or make sure you're getting the right unit initially. So let's start off with a little whiteboard session to show you how this can turn into a big issue if you do not take into account what is called idle consumption. Now for this example, let's say we have the Blue Eddy AC180, which is one of the three we'll test today. Now the battery capacity on that is 1152 watt hours, but for simple math, let's say it was 999 watt hours. That is the capacity of the battery within this power station. And our single appliance is gonna be a refrigerator. That is what we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna plug in to this unit here. Now we have tested or maybe we looked up the energy guide and we know that this takes 333 watt hours per day to power. Now the refrigerator specifically is cyclical. That is not a constant power draw. It's gonna kind of be on off and if it goes through a defrost cycle that power demand really goes up. If we did this simple math here and we knew our appliance, what is the demand on our power station? Maybe we're setting up an off grid set up or maybe we're doing like a power backup scenario. So we want to size out our sump pump, our refrigerator, maybe a freezer, anything that we need to power. Well, the math's pretty simple, right? If we're going to take 333 watt hours per day and we have a capacity of 999, well, then we're going to be running for three days, right? Well, wrong. And that is because we're not taking into account the idle consumption. And that is the power consumption that the AC inverter is gonna use just by being on. And it can be considerable. It can be so considerable that this can actually be cut down in half for certain applications. Now that is why often people will size a power station, they'll put it into use and they will be very much disappointed with their outcome because idle consumption was just not taken into account. So let's test these three units out and see how many watt hours per day in just idle consumption are they gonna take up and which one is most efficient. Now for the testing, it's pretty straightforward and that's just setting the units side by side and making sure that the inverter is turned off and it will not time out. I ran the test for over three days and here's after 24 hours, the Blue Eddy AC180 next to the EcoFlow Delta 3 Plus. Next to the EcoFlow Delta 2, so taking the battery level every 12 hours, here are my results and how I'm going to get that trend line to get my daily idle consumption in watt hours. So we have the Blue Eddy AC180 in blue, Delta 2 in red, and then Delta 3 Plus in orange. Now right away, straight out of the gates, the Blue Eddy was actually the worst one and dropped 20% in 12 hours but it quickly recovered and the Delta 3 Plus was the clear loser when it came to idle consumption. Now, over half of the audience polled thought that the Delta 3 Plus was gonna be the most efficient. Now, I didn't say idle consumption, I said efficiency, and 50% thought this was gonna be the best. It actually died after 60 hours, and it was the only one in the test that actually died within the testing period. We saw the Delta 2 and the AC180 kind of go neck and neck by the end where they were both similar in performance and overall not too bad in terms of the idle consumption and could easily last over four days just from having the inverter on and having those idle consumption losses. So if we break this down into watt hours, what does this mean? And let me show you the master spreadsheet, which you'll see a link in the description, or if you're on your TV, you can just scan this QR code to get a copy, if it will help you with your projects. And then let me know if there's other power stations in the size class that you want me to add. If there's a consensus, I'll go ahead and purchase those, do the similar testing so we can see those side by side in the spreadsheet. Now, I don't know where prices are gonna go on these. Right now, it's really cost effective to buy one of these units, especially if they're on sale. But a lot of different solar panels, portable power station, and inverters, the prices could be going up in the near future. 
So if you are considering solar for your home to completely eliminate your power bill, now the equipment you're gonna need is way beyond the stuff we have here. So that's either gonna be a professionally installed system, which you can check the link in the description or this QR code to where I started off last year for my own home to size out my over 11 kilowatt system and get an idea on pricing. Now, if you wanna take on a whole nother size project, but save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars. Believe it or not, you can take on that type of project, a grid tied, roof mounted or ground mounted system yourself, like I did on one of my rental units last year. So you can see that link or this QR code for the DIY version of that, where you can save money. Now you're gonna put in a lot of effort, but they're gonna help you with engineering, pulling your permits, getting all your procured equipment, dropping that off the home, that's when you go to work installing everything and then they'll help you with your inspections and your permission to operate from your utility. So all the results are in, I added them to the spreadsheet. Remember, if you want a spreadsheet or your own copy so you can use it for your own application, there's a link in the description or this QR code will get you over there if you're watching on your TV. Now this spreadsheet I use for home backup, but I'm also using it to size for a Haiti project where we're powering homes and I wanna make sure I have the right power unit to power the appliances that we need. So I have a list of the overall appliances I can choose from. You can add your own in here and what the watt demand is, how what's the surge, and then how many hours are you running per day. And then you can go over here, maybe I need to charge another phone. You add those appliances or those devices, and then that is what then populates out your use case. And that is what I'm comparing then to my different power units. Now you do have to manually put in your daily energy loss. So if you're doing a unit that has larger losses, you might need to add that in here to adjust what is that overall energy consumption that you're gonna have per day. And that is the number that then you're selecting and comparing versus different units out here to see will that fit my need. And then the master list of the power stations is here and here's our results. So the Delta 3 Plus was not great. 403 watt hours per day are lost in just idle consumption. That is not good considering the battery capacity is only 1,024. So that's just not good results. And it makes me think that maybe I even have a bad unit. It was an early production unit EcoFlow sent over. But when I looked at the LCD during the trial, I did see the little fan running when nothing was going on. So that could be where a parasitic loss, that's what's draining that battery down and why the results were so bad. Now the Delta II and the AC180 actually performed really well and similarly. Now we have a few other results here from past testing, but let me know what other units you guys want me to include and we'll start adding them to this so then you can download it and kind of be a resource for the community. Additionally, I did run a constant 500 watt heat gun load. That only lasts about two hours of runtime, so you're not gonna have a lot of idle losses, and it's more what is the efficiency of the inverter? How many watt hours am I actually pulling out of that 120 outlet compared to the overall battery capacity because we're running from 100% all the way down to 0%. The Delta 3 Plus was 84%, so I was able to pull out 84% of the overall battery capacity. The Delta 2 was similar at 83, and the AC1A was a little bit better at 86%. So hopefully that helped you guys out and let me know any feedback you have down in the description. I'd love to hear from you guys. Now, if you wanna see some of our latest solar panel testing, here's the foldable 100 watt panel test, which has some pretty darn surprising results. And let's just say Blue Eddy did not come out top on that test. And then if you wanna see the DIY roof mounted grid tied install I did last year, you can check this video out and I'll walk you through each and every step in that process to see if it's a project that you wanna take on in the future. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.